Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have a pretty cool video where I just want to walk you through a flow that I kind of came up with um, on my own just for a personal project where I needed to create DAGs via an API, which as I know is a very common problem for a lot of people, you know, the ability to programmatically not only trigger DAGs, which is relatively easy with parameters and airflow, but actually create net new DAGs that you want to run on a regular basis, right? And so that is the problem I was looking to solve and you know, trying to do it with a DAG, DAG factory didn't really work because the scale of, you know, I was thinking of, hey, I wanna create thousands of DAGs. If you're doing that with the DAG factory or you know, any other kind of top level DAG code within Airflow itself, that's gonna rerun every single time you run that DAG processor and it's going to tank your airflow environment's performance over the long haul. So, had to find a different solution where basically what I came up with was using a GitHub action workflow to actually, and a template and a Python script, which I'm gonna walk you through all right now, to create the DAG via a GitHub action workflow where I'm just calling the API for that GitHub action workflow passing it the relevant values that I want to, you know, use to configure my DAG template uh, for, you know, a given topic, and then go and create that DAG and post it into my GitHub repository, where it can then be sent up into my Airflow environment um, using, you know, Air, our astronomers, uh, basically just, you know, Astro Deploy feature, where I can just deploy that code directly into a running Airflow environment. Um, but I'm gonna walk you through everything of what I just talked about, show you exactly how you can do it yourself um, and relatively easily too. It really wasn't that complex of a problem um, as, as much as I thought it would be at the start. So uh, let's get into it. So the first piece of this puzzle um, was actually just creating a templatized Airflow DAG. Um, and so here basically just use generic Jinja templating. So nothing really fancy here. Uh, develop the DAG like normally, you know, have all my packages, everything that stays static. And most of the DAG itself is staying static. It's really just changing the relevant values, which in this case, I wanted to create a DAG ID where I'm going to be passing as part of this call a username. So the username, so I have a unique identifier on it. Um, the pipeline ID, so every user, every time they create a new pipeline, it's granted an incremented pipeline ID. Um, and then also just removing at and period because you can't have those in a DAG ID and that was causing me some issues earlier. Um, and you'll notice here I'm creating it, you know, both at the DAG ID level here and then also in the DAG definition here as well, um, because you got to make sure that you're templating every single time you would have this, um, or you can set top level variables and inject them out throughout the DAG. That actually might be a better approach, but this is just how I did it uh, earlier. So after I've templated, you know, injected the DAG ID, then I also want to template the business type. So the idea here is I want to create, you know, an, an AI uh, pipeline here for, for generating memes. Um, and here just create a you know, joke related to this business type um, and then you know, injecting you know, a prompt and the rest of this is isn't super relevant, um, but basically just injecting the business type and then here getting the actual joke. So Jinja templating the joke um, and then going down here and again, passing this all down into uh, a, another API call, which is going and getting uh, an image from the GPT image one model. Um, then down here, what I'm going to do um, is I have, you know, just saving it to an S3 bucket. And again, bringing in my user ID, pipeline ID, uh, and, and what I've got from, you know, the API call to my GitHub action workflow. Um, and then again, creating this all with my S3 URL. And that's pretty much all the Jinja templating you needed for this, aside from right at the end again, making sure, you know, instantiating the DAG, you're replacing um, all those values again to generate the same exact DAG ID as you did at the top of your DAG. Um, and that's really all you need to do to your DAG code. Um, it's just any variables or, you know, the, the X value that you're dot using to dot expand this, this DAG almost um, is what you need to Jinja template in. And then the next step of this is this DAG generation script. Um, so here, just importing these different packages. So make sure you have them uh, in your environment where you're you know, going to be actually running this. Um, and here, what I'm doing is generating the DAG from the template. So these are just sending in out messages to GitHub Action Workflows, adding these arguments for pipeline ID, for username, for schedule, for business type. And so this is how we are you know, basically getting our values from the API call and then sending them in so into our actual template. So adding all those arguments, then getting the root directory of our project. So remember, this is kind of interacting with 
within GitHub Action Workflow. So going through getting our root directory and then getting our DAG template, so script directory and include, um, and then also our DAGs directory here as well, making sure the DAG directory, DAGs directory exists, obviously, then opening our DAG template file, so that file we have right here that I just showed you, and then making sure that you know it actually was able to be found properly, creating a Jinja 2 template from that, so taking all those things that I've and double quotes, that makes it into Jinja injectable format, um, and then formatting the schedule as well. So taking whatever schedule I was given. So I also wanted to generate a schedule based on whatever they had provided. Um, so this is generating that schedule, making sure it's going to be compatible with Airflow um, and is formatted with that. Also then rendering the template. So here I'm bringing in the business type, the schedule, uh, the arguments, uh, their username um, and the pipeline ID. So these are all the arguments that I will show you get injected into the actual GitHub workflow when you make the API call. Um, and then here, generating the output file name. So here replacing the username, uh, similar to you know, the same thing I basically did with the DAG ID, but again, doing it for my uh, username for the output file name, because I want to make sure that the output file name is the same as the DAG ID, um, just for pure readability and also maintainability. Um, same thing for my pipeline ID, um, creating that output file name where, again, this is you know equivalent to the DAG ID I created within the DAG, um, and then putting that in the DAG's directory in that new file name path that I just created. And then finally, writing it all out to that render DAG, so taking that output path, successfully rendering it with all those values that I injected in, and otherwise you know, just execute an error and, and let me know that this failed for, for some reason or another. So now, the final piece of the puzzle is the actual GitHub workflow itself. So here, you know, we have our, we're defining on our workflow dispatch. So when this workflow gets started, I would need to have these inputs. So business type, I need the schedule, I need the username, and I need a pipeline ID. Then I need a, you know, to generate the DAG, I'm going to then check out a repository. Um, I'm going to set up Python, install any necessary dependencies to make sure that, hey, I have the same dependencies that I would need to actually, you know, run this job. Um, and then running the, you know, generate DAG from template script. So generating that DAG, injecting in here, grabbing those inputs that we got through the GitHub Action API call. So this is where we're actually grabbing the relevant details and sending them down to the downstream script. And that's why you have that initial part in the generate DAG script to actually parse them out from the arguments that were given to the GitHub workflow itself. Then once that step has been done and the DAG has been generated, we're then going to add the generated DAG file to the to Git and then also check for any changes, make sure, hey, there's been a new DAG added successfully and then adding that DAG with the proper Git message saying, hey, we've added a new DAG of this business type. So you have a complete record of all of your DAGs because obviously, you know, you want to have, you don't just want to have things silently appearing. Um, and if this wasn't adding itself to your repository, you would then have to come in here and repush uh, every time someone added a new DAG, which obviously is not the point. This is to have truly automated DAG creation. Um, and, you know, this probably isn't an endpoint you want to have publicly, but rather something, you know, tightly controlled um, that, you know, you have to pay for it or do something like that for it. And that's really all you need to do. And um, the rest of it is pretty easy to fit. You know, you just hit the GitHub Action API endpoint with the name of your GitHub Action workflow. Um, but really the entire framework is that easy. Just have a generator script, have a Jinja templated DAG, um, and then have a GitHub Action workflow that takes that Jinja template, runs that script, and then posts that DAG to a repository for a truly automated new DAG creation workflow where there's no additional overhead on your Airflow environment. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.